I'm so glad you're here. Well, I'm iced in and I figured you might be as well. Just sitting here by the fireplace, I've got this position so that maybe you can see out there, although it's a complete whiteout. But we do have power and I hope you have power. Well, our last video on when does the day of the Lord begin and how long does it last, that just opened up so many passages for our team here. And we went off on so many bunny trails that my mind is just swirling. So I'm thinking I just need to get one of these bunny trails in video so that I can move on to the next. Well, what captured my attention is I was reading in the book of Job, of all places, and I was at chapter 26, and many of you now know that Job is a type and shadow of Jesus, the righteous son of man who was being tormented and suffering in the flesh on the cross, and people around him mocking him, his loved ones standing afar off, aloof, not really understanding what is going on here, his disciples scattered, and you can imagine, they're probably thinking, well, if he was as righteous as we thought he was, why is he going through this? Because the disciples were not understanding what was going on yet. They did not have that revelation of Bible prophecy and that the Messiah, his first advent, it was him coming as the lamb, not as the conquering king. So you know that. Well, we have Job, the same situation. His friends not understanding this situation that had been set up behind closed doors and looking at Job, this righteous man, and trying to figure out why is he going through this suffering if Job is as righteous as we've always thought he is, well then, he shouldn't be suffering like this. Well, then you know the end of the story that Job recovers, the Lord heals him, restores everything, and then he ends up interceding for his friends. Okay, so I'm reading in Job chapter 26, verses 12 and 13. Now listen to this, because we get some very interesting details about something that happened in the past, New American Standard Bible, referring to God, he quieted the sea with his power, and by his understanding, he shattered Rahab. Now, Rahab is the Hebrew word for proud and strength. Verse 13, by his breath, the heavens are cleared. His hand has pierced the fleeing serpent. Okay, so I had read that verse many times before, but I guess I never really thought it through. Verse 13, that when Lucifer sinned, rebelled against God, mutined against heaven, the Spirit of God, the breath of God, as it says in Job 26, 13, drove him out of the highest heaven, and as he was fleeing, as the serpent was fleeing, the hand of God pierced him, pierced the serpent. This is why he's called the fleeing serpent. So I'm percolating on this and I could not get past these verses. I would read other, I went on and finished the chapter, but that just for days just really was tapping into my spirit. And so I went back and I started doing some word studies in verse about verse 13 and looking at the King James and the NASB and really going deep into these word studies. And I finally concluded that the NASB, when I really took the trail um, deeply into the word studies, the NASB in this situation really has it more accurately translated. So I'm going to read verse 13 again. By his breath, the heavens are cleared his hand has pierced the fleeing serpent. Well, and as you know, Bible prophecy is cyclical. What has happened before is going to happen again. So what we see here is when Lucifer rebelled against God and was blown out of heaven by the breath of God, 
Apparently, as this serpent was fleeing from God's spirit, he was pierced by God. So now I have to ask the question, was that a head wound? Because we see that because prophecy is cyclical, it's going to happen again. Genesis 3.15, you're familiar. God will cause the serpent to be bruised on the head. God will bruise him on the head. And yet we're told that the serpent will bruise God on the heel. And we know that happened at the crucifixion. But then we also read Revelation 13, and we see where the seven-headed beast comes out of the sea. And in Revelation 13, verse 3, one of his heads looked like it had been healed of a fatal wound. So did God give him that fatal head wound as the serpent was fleeing the highest heaven? Well, the head in scripture represents authority. You know, we get that from passages in the New Testament. Lucifer lost his authority when he was chased out of the highest heaven. Well, and then Adam gave him his authority over the earth when Adam believed the serpent's words. Well, when God allowed the serpent to bruise Jesus on the heel 2,000 years ago on the cross, it was God's brilliant setup for in that day when God would get to bruise him again. Because there's a law in Exodus chapter 21, 25. Listen to this, Exodus 21, 25. Burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. So God was setting up the serpent when he allowed Satan to pierce Jesus on the heel because that means Jesus could then bruise him. So now consider this. Every bruise that the serpent inflicts upon a reed, because we've heard about the bruised reed. Well, for every bruise that the serpent inflicts upon a reed, God will bruise the serpent. So if you are a bruised reed, if somebody has harmed you, it was actually the dark domain that inspired that person to harm you. We don't want to really hurt each other. We're for each other. Sometimes, it, you know, the bruise comes from someone we love, a household member, um, a dear friend, someone we work with. You know, they don't want to hurt us, but yet we, we get our feelings hurt. We get our reputation hurt. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But see, that is inspired by the serpent. Now, our tendency is to get back at that person, or we retort back, or we get real sassy. You know, I can be very, very sassy. You know, I have to really watch my mouth. Because if I try to wound somebody back, if I bruise them back, well, that means God, who's the law giver and the law keeper, that means that revenge that I take out to get revenge for myself, now Jesus cannot give that revenge because it's already this it's already been dished out. Wouldn't it be better for all of us when we've been hurt, when we've been burned, when we've been bruised, just keep our mouths shut. Just hold back our actions. Just pray over our attitude. And I realize, you know, it takes a good 15 minutes to get done being mad or hurt or angry, but you know, just pray about it. Let it go. Let God get his vengeance. Because in that last video, we were talking about the, the day of the Lord, which is a year of vengeance. So the day of the Lord lasts a year because it's going to take a year for the glorified church, the man-child, the rod of iron to begin this bruising process on behalf of God towards Lucifer. So we learned by Exodus 21, 25, that God is going to inflict Satan with every bruise that he has ever inflicted on anyone 
throughout all mankind. Uh, those who are in Christ. Let's not try to get payback. Let's just be in prayer for those who hurt us. Let's be in prayer for our known enemies because we do have enemies that do not love us. We know, you know, in a large part who they are. But God is the lawmaker and the law upholder. He is just and he is fair. And God wants to be the one to bruise Satan back. Not only that, but when we go get our own vengeance, that just keeps the battle going back and forth, bruise for bruise. Let me reread that verse in Exodus 21, 25. Burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. So when we try to get vengeance on our behalf to make us feel better or whatever, all that does is it keeps that battle going. And so we want to, we want to end that battle. So now let me read to you again, Isaiah 63, 4 from the last video. For the day of vengeance was in my heart and my year of redemption has come. So it's going to come. And let's go on in that passage, verse nine. In all their affliction, he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his mercy, he redeemed them. And he lifted them and carried them all the days of old. So you see, when we are afflicted by the enemy, when we are bruised, burned, wounded, Jesus feels that affliction. It is as if he is being afflicted again. So this is why we're going to let Jesus have his day of vengeance and his year of redemption because he's really redeeming us. Okay, thank you so much for coming to this channel and I hope that you have power in your home. I hope that all of your appliances are working. I hope you have hot water. I hope you have plenty of food in your refrigerator and your cabinets and may God's blessings be poured out on you. May your body, as you hear verses being read and as you read verses yourself, I pray that the word of God heals your body. We're praying for you. And, you know, I don't say it very often because I don't want it to come across as corny, but I really do love you. I think about you, all of you subscribers, all of you who view the videos. I, I pray for you. I think of you every day. I wonder, you know, how can I serve you better? How can I explain things better? How can I help you prepare yourself to be the bride? Because the bride has made herself ready, so we have some responsibility. And so I just want you to know, <laughs> I really do love you and I enjoy serving you. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.